Hello everybody. In this video we are going to be working on some more general problem solving with generating functions. So first I want to offer you a summation problem and that is the infinite sum uh, as n goes from 0 to infinity of the nth Fibonacci number divided by 2 to the n. And uh, so when I first saw this problem I didn't know even what generating functions were and it is it is possible to solve this problem without generating functions although the technique I use is very reminiscent it's it's using term shifting I I divided by probably two and four right and then you can manipulate those in a way that all the nice Fibonacci stuff sort of cancels um, but in a more general sense this is this is the uh, what we're adding up is of the form f sub n times x to the n, right? And this is what a general term of a generating function looks like, right? It's the coefficient is our sequence, and then we have some some x to the n, some polynomial term associated with that that uh, value of the sequence. And so in our in our case we're plugging in uh, one half. So what we actually have here is um, if you remember the generating function for uh, the Fibonacci numbers but we're plugging in one half. So the the Fibonacci generating function is one is x over 1 minus x minus x squared and so we need to evaluate that at one half okay simple enough uh, we have one half at the top and then in the bottom we have 1 minus one half is a half minus one half squared which is one fourth so uh, one half minus one fourth is one fourth one half over one fourth is actually two. So this is a really nice answer, it's just two. And like I said, you can do term shifting to, to actually solve this problem without generating function knowledge, but it's nice to be able to recognize this and easily come up with a solution. In a similar vein, well, no, actually not really. Uh, this is more of a abstract Olympia type problem almost. And so, we have the number 1 over 89 and if you write out the decimal expansion you will see 0 0.011235 uh, actually not 8 but 9 uh, and, and so on so here uh, we see sort of the first few Fibonacci numbers, right? 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5. Uh, but in fact, we didn't get an 8. And that's not because this fraction is not related to the Fibonacci numbers, because it is. It's because. Um, it's because what we're doing here, right, is we sort of have one Fibonacci number for each digit, for, for each decimal place, right? But once we have the Fibonacci number of 13, this is obviously bigger than one decimal place can handle in our base 10 system. And so it overlaps with our 8. Uh, but we want to prove that this is actually equal to, uh, or, or, or that we're getting this decimal, or we're getting this fraction from Fibonacci numbers, right? So what is this? So if, if, each, if each Fibonacci number is taking up its own decimal place, right? Sort of think of this zero as as zero times ten to the negative one, right? And 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 
here we have uh, 1 times 10 to the negative 2, right? And we're sort of, we're adding all these up. We're adding e up each sort of decimal place, and then we have overlap, of course. But the point is, we have something of the form a Fibonacci number times a power. Now, in our specific case, uh, we aren't starting with equal sort of indices, like this is f sub 0, but this is 10 to the negative 1. So we actually have to factor out uh, 1 tenth here. And then we get, inside we get a Fibonacci sum, or a, a sort of a Fibonacci generating sum. And so we get, what we have is 1 tenth, is our, is our x. So we're evaluating the Fibonacci generating function at one tenth, and if you look at that, that'll be um, that. Will that come out right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so if you do that, we still have the one tenth out here. Then we'll have one tenth, and what what we what we can actually do, since down here we have we'll have a one over one hundred, is multiply top and bottom by one hundred. That'll make this one tenth which is our x, go to a 10. So we'll have 10 in the numerator. And then we'll have 100 minus 10 minus 1. So we see here that the 10s cancel out. And then 100 minus 10 minus 1 is actually 89. So we, we, we know for certain that 1 over 89 is indeed, does have this connection with the Fibonacci numbers. And there's actually a, a crazier fraction that we see here, and that is this fraction. I, I decided to type it because I didn't want to write that many nines. Uh, but it's one divided one divided by four nines, eight followed by five nines, uh, and I th that is related to um, Fibonacci numbers, but with uh, like gaps of five. Um, So, this is more of a general problem solving video, um, but obviously we haven't gone through everything about generating functions. So, I'll have another one of these, um, especially after I, we discover the, um, what's it called, the, the generating function for the Catalan numbers. Um, if you don't know what the Catalan numbers are, I have uh, a few videos on those. We will actually discover a, a generating function for them and that will allow us to solve another very very cool problem. Um, but I'm sure by the time we get there I'll have other cool problems for that. So that's it for this video. Uh, I wanted to make it a little more uh, a little shorter because uh, my last few videos were longer than expected. And um, Sorry for the, the lack of uploads recently. I'm trying to find some interesting Olympiad problems to solve. Um, and I know that the International Math Olympiad was just finalized, but I couldn't solve any of the problems there. So uh, I'm still in search of good good problems. Um, I like problem solving, if, if you can tell already. But uh, if you have interesting problems, just uh, let me know message me on Twitter or whatever, uh, post them in the comments, and I'll, I will make videos on any sort of problems you have, but uh, yeah. Anyway, thank you for watching, and I'll see you on my next videos.